Uh, hello, welcome back to Informal Solutions. In our previous lessons, we talked about integer functions and we saw how to plot graphs of integer functions and how to get the integer function of a given value. In today's tutorials, we would like to take another aspect of limits which we were doing or started with calculus 1. Today we want to talk about the uniqueness theorem. What does uniqueness theorem of limits tell us? Let's find out from the board. So today we're doing uniqueness theorem. Actually, the uniqueness theorem states that at any point in time, a limit can exist, but only one, one and only one limit can exist for at a particular time. So we can't get two or more limits at a particular time. No, from the uniqueness theorem, that means every limit is unique. Okay one and only one can be found or is present at a time. With this uniqueness theorem, it helps us to compute what the theorem behind what limits or finding values for limits. Since we've gotten the idea behind limits, its graphical representation, and actually what the limits talks about. Now let's try to find out the rules we use in computing limits when they have been given in functional forms. So let's move down to the rules that we can use in what? Computing limits. At least we have some basic seven rules but we will split some of them so that we get them easily. Uh, it will be easier to understand. So we first take the rules and we try to explain them and start using them to compute our limits. So the first rule that we can talk of is the addition rule. So we are supposing that C is a constant okay, in all our representation when you see the letter C. C stands for a constant, that's a number which does not change or is a single number but not a variable. Okay. When we have the limit of two functions, let's say f of x plus g of x, as x is approaching, let's say, a. We compute this by taking the limit of each individual functions, then after that we add their limits together. So when you have it in this form, it becomes the limit of f of x, okay, as x approaches a plus the limit of g of x as x approaches a. So when you find the limit of the first function, in the limit of the second function, then you add them together. So that's how we compute the limit of the sum of what two different functions. And likewise, rule two tells us about the subtraction. When we want to find the difference of two different functions with respect to their limit. So as you we have the limit of f of x minus g of x as x approaches a. We compute this by first finding the limit of f of x as x approaches a. Then we subtract it from the limit of g of x as x approaches a. So that's how we compute this as well. We find the limit of the first function the limit of the second function, then we subtract the value of what they are limits. Okay, rule three that we can talk about is when we have the limit of a constant 
times a function, let's say f of x. If you have a constant multiplying a function and you have to find their limit as x is approaching e, how do you compute that? What you do is we factor the constant out, then we find the limit of the function in question. Okay, as x approaches e. So after finding the function of the the limit of the given function, then we multiply by what? The constant. So that's what the third rule we'll be using talks about. So the limit of a constant of a function is the product of the constant by the limit of what? That function. So that's it. And the fourth one we'll be talking about is finding the limit of the product of two or more functions. Let's say f of x times g of x. You are finding their limit as x approaches e. How do we compute this? We compute it by first, we know that this is a product, so we find the limit of f of x we also find the limit of g of x, then we multiply the value of their limits. So this becomes the limit of f of x as x approaches a times the limit of g of x as x approaches a. So you find the individual limits of the function, then you do what? You multiply them. So if we have more than two functions, you keep finding the limit of the individual functions that you multiply all together. So these are the first four. So we we'll try to look at other aspects as well. Since we've talked about addition, subtraction, multiplication as by a constant and also a function by another function, let's look at how we compute the limit if we have division of two or more functions. So we name that rule number five. So if you have the limit of f of x over g of x as x approaches a, how do we compute this limit? As we said early on, we find the limit of the individual function that's limit of f of x as x approaches a, then we divide it by the limit of g of x as x approaches a. Meaning, we find the limit of the first function, we find the limit of the second function, then after that, we divide their what? Values. And that's how we are using them. And let's also talk about rule number six that we can also use. Thus, when we have the limit of a function to a power, so let's say the limit of the function f of x, okay, as x approaches a, all to the power n, all to the power n. So you have to find the limit of f of x as x approaches a all to the power n. How do you compute that? Like we did for the constant multiple of a function, we use the same idea here. So we first find the limit of the function as f of x as it approaches what? As the x approaches a. And after that, we are going to what? Square the function. So let's see this one. We have the brackets here. So the limit is outside the bracket. That's actually finding the limit of a function to its power. So we first find the limit of the function. After that, then we raise it to the power n. 
So instead of we using the function to the power n before finding the limit, we actually compute the limit of the function as x approaches a. After that, then we raise the value towards the power given by n. So we do it that way. Also, the seventh one we can talk about is the limit of a constant. The limit of a constant as s approaches e is still constant because there is no x in that expression, so you can't approach any other value apart from what c because c is just a constant. So limit of a constant is still a constant. And the last one we talk about, which is basic, is the limit of a function, let's say x, as x approaches a, will be equal to a, because we have x being the function, and as x is approaching a, definitely the function also becomes what? Closer or nearer, nearer towards a, so we have it as that. So the limit of x as x approaches a, is also a. So these are some of the basic rules we'll be using in computing uh, limits. So let's take um, one example here and find out how the rules are being used. Taking an example here, assuming we have this function, we are finding the limit of the function 2x squared minus 3x plus 4 as x approaches 5 to find the solution to this problem. Find the limit of the function 2x to the power 2 minus 3x plus 4 as x approaches 5. So we can see that we have subtraction and addition in the function. So we are going to use rule number 1 and rule number two for computing this kind of limit. So we first have to find the limit of the first term as 2x squared as x approaches 5. Okay, all minus the limit of 3x as x approaches 5 plus the limit of the constant 4 as x approaches 5. Now, when you have the limit of 2x squared as x is approaching 5, all that we do is to substitute 5 into the expression. So 5 squared is actually 25 and 25 by 2 is what? is 50. So we have 50 minus, now the limit of 3x as x is approaching 5. So when we substitute 5 with x, we are going to get 3 by 5 and 3 by 5 is what? 15 plus the limit of 4 as x approaches 5. This is a limit of a constant, so here we are going to use rule number 7. So limit of a constant is still a constant. So since there is no x in this expression, the constant still what maintains itself. So we finally simplify 50 minus 15 plus 4. And this gives us 39. So the limit of this function as x approaches 5 is what? 39. So this is how we compute limits. Okay. 
So, with this basic idea of computing limits, we'll be ending today's tutorial here. Hopefully, when we meet another time, we will talk about the direct substituting property where we wouldn't have to go through all this process, but since we've gotten to know that we actually replace each x by the limits we are approaching, we have a rule called the direct substitution rule. In our next lesson, we will see that to meet is a goodbye.